I need to ask your mum, what kind of stuff does she wear? Is she still a mod? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Why did that get such a reaction? <laughs> <laughs>Hello and welcome to List Podcast, The Guests. Each of these episodes features different guests and conversations with someone who knows them. Tonight, that's me and Danny. Um, <laughs> we are recording this episode after dinner with our lovely friends in London who have kindly stayed along to uh, listen to our chat. I'm Zach, I'm style editor of GQ, and this is Danny. And what, what, what do you do? Um, <laughs> for, the, for, those not, for those who don't know, what do you actually do? Uh, form presenter of the YouTube show PAQ. Currently a uh, content creator and model, I guess. That is my official title. So yeah, hello. So PAQ, how did you get from, how did you get that? And then how did you end up here? So now that PAQ is over, and I can tell the real story, it was essentially, <laughs> um, essentially what happened was, um, well, going from my life before was, I've got no like formal background in either presenting, I had no real aspiration to do YouTube or anything like this. It was quite far-fetched. It wasn't really a thing at the time. Yeah. And um, I, I just wanted to work kind of, not wanting to work in a retail store, but I'd handed out my CV to a few uh, shops in like our local shopping center. Um, ended up getting a DM on Instagram from a last called Kai Schwartz who said, hey, we're looking for a presenter for a new online show. I can't remember if streetwear or not. Um, covering like fashion, culture, and this kind of stuff in London. Are you free for an email? It's like, oh, this is quite cool. It could either be spam or scam or whatever. You never what, like... What year was this? Did you have a big this following? Was, already? No, oh, no, I was on... I remember I was on 1,313 because it was like 1313, oh, wow, okay. which is quite <laughs> weird. <Precise. laughs> yeah, I remember it so... Big day for you. <laughs> isn't it? But it was... Uh, yeah, it was really bizarre. And I'm pretty sure she told me afterwards that it's because I've always lived in Yorkshire, but I used to go down to London. But if I did go down to London, I'd geotag London. But if I was in Yorkshire, I wouldn't geotag anything. So she thought I was actually from London. So I kind Hopefully of no one from Yorkshire is listening. <laughs> don't think they've got internet. I don't think we're that far in yet. But um, yeah, like, so, I got the, uh, so I got the email, uh, had a phone call. And then after that, went down for like an interview, which was just kind of, just like a personality thing. There was nothing really there. It was just like, uh, hi, thanks for coming in. Like, just wanted to see you in person, see whatever, see if not catfishing or whatever. And then basically, um, after that, it was like, we've got, I think it was another two interviews and then it became the group stage. So I think it was originally 100,000 people got the DM, 10,000 got the email. So 100,000? 100,000. Who the hell was sending the DM? Oh, Carly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Some intern somewhere. No money. Like, oh, yeah. God. And it was like, yeah, 10,000 got the email. And then it was 100 groups of four went and there's like a group session. They're still going to narrow it down again and kind of whittle it out mm. and do whatever. But me and the four boys ended up doing it. Um, we went in together. I didn't know any of the boys. Elle didn't know the boys. Um, funny enough, Dex and Shaq knew each other and they used to like, they used to do a, like a dance style called Jerk and it was like a Trocadero, like, <laughs> it was a, a London like street dance kind of thing. And them two had been drinking together the night before and they knew of each other but they weren't too friendly. They were like, anyway mate, I'm going to head off, like I've got an interview in the morning, it's like, oh me too, best of luck with yours, yeah, best of luck with yours. Turn up at the same interview. So it was, wow, the book okay. of Kyra. And then, yeah, so they were trying it all, and then um, we were like spitballing ideas. It was like one of those, like, not team building, but it was seeing what you're into. And then uh, it was originally nothing to do with fashion. It was like four lads on the internet. So we were going to do stuff like planning parties without being there. So you'd have okay. CCTV on a location, and you'd have to do like real life sims where you'd hire like builders, landscapers, do this kind of stuff to kind of set stuff up and then do whatever. But all of our like ideas ended up coming back to fashion. We were like, you know what, let's do a fashion show. So uh, came up the first one, and then they were basically like, you know what, instead of picking and choosing like different lads, you lot work together, we've got a good idea, let's run it as a pilot. 130 episodes, he still hasn't told me if I've got the job or not, <laughs> so I don't know if I am going to be a PAQ presenter or if they're still like, oh yeah, just on to the, keep um, our wages. On well. the original idea, did you find that daunting? Because you obviously had no experience in any of that. <laughs> it was... Kind of, Unless you did play The Sims, <laughs> don't know. It was. It sounded fun, but you know when you're like, this is how much longevity has this got? Yeah. Like it's. It sounds good and it sounds cool and it's a great idea, but it's one of those. It's like a, a viral ten minute video, something like that. Mm. But 
where do you go from there? I think like a lot of inspiration was like those, the Try Guys and stuff like that. It was obviously algorithm based and that. But then Shaq came up with Fire Fits for 50 quid, which is 50 quid to get a full outfit. Um, and then you get judged at the end of it. So the first one was um, obviously just us boys judging each other and just like mm -hmm. scoring it, like come down with me style. But then the format obviously developed into we get a guest judging and all this kind of stuff. And then it got bigger and bigger. And yeah, it's bizarre. So. <laughs> and then when did... So when did PAQ end? And then how are you... What are you doing now? How, what, what's that led Ooh, to? Oh, reminiscing a lot. <laughs> no, it's, uh, so it ended through COVID, basically, because a lot of okay. ours was... It was very much... What's it called? Not situational-based, but we had to be out and about. Yeah. There's not a good content in just saying... We did a few episodes, it's like an online challenge, but you can't do it for all of them. So yeah. ha like having the physical aspect taken away where you go and chat to designers and do whatever... It was just too unfeasible to kind of carry on. So yeah. um, Dex is wanting to do his music, Shaq wants to do his art, and Elle wants to do like a clothing line. I'm very happy go lucky. But after doing like, <laughs> it basically means he's got a fuck all idea of what I want to do. <laughs> so then uh, after three years of doing it, I think we were like, you know what? We'll take a break now. Yeah. We've got a nice little platform, a nice like, like, what do you call it? Like, uh, really obvious word. What am I about? Experience. So you got like experience, contacts, and like a platform. So it's like, you know what? Why don't we just go off and like do what we've got to do? And worst comes to worst, down the line, we can either do like a reunion or we can carry it on. You mentioned um, longevity. At what point in during PAQ or after did you realize that actually you don't need to go and work in retail or you don't need to get like a nine to five job? I, I, I don't know when the actual switching point was because it was. Have you realized yet? Or? <laughs> I, 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 it was because I was kind of. It was weird because. I got accepted a job at Paul Smith before I'd gone to the interview at PAQ. Because I'd had it out at four stores. It was Paul Smith, Fred Perry, Lacoste, and Ralph Lauren. And all of them except for, Ralph, uh, all of them except for Paul Smith were in store. So mm -hmm. they were like, yeah, it's the managers in there that will decide who gets a job. Yeah. But Paul Smith is like, it'll go to the head office. So I was like, obviously, I'm not going to get that one. I don't have any experience or whatever. And then got to London and I met up with a lass called Hebe and I was basically saying like, we were just going to hang around and like, she was like, just, just a friend in London to go around with. <laughs> and then um, when I got to London, I got a message off the, like the, I got a phone call from the Paul Smith lot saying, this would have been on a Saturday, saying on Monday, come in with your passport and you'll start there and then. I was like, sick. Did you have so, your passport? <laughs> to just carry it around? <laughs> <laughs> Always, yeah. <laughs> So I said to Hebe, I was like, well, there's not really much point in me going to like this interview in London. I've got a job that's 40 minutes away. It's a stable retail job. Mm -hmm. Don't know what like this, um, obviously won't be a kid at the time, but I didn't know what this London job was going to be. And it's, I don't live in London. So I might just not go. She's like, just go to it. That's what you're here for. I was like, right, I'm going to be really pedantically myself. I'm not going to try and schmooze my way in. I'm not going to be like angling it a different way. I'm going to be like, right, here we are. I've got nothing to lose. I've got a job at home waiting for me technically. So I'll just see what this is all about. It's a bit of fun on that. Yeah. And then, yeah, so with that, fast forward a little bit, we started filming PAQ maybe once, maybe three or four days every two months. But okay. it wasn't paying the bills then. It was only like, obviously, just a couple of, like, a couple hundred quid for like a filming day. And that was it. So I ended up working at Fred Perry. Uh, in the designer outlet. Okay. And I think the reason when I knew it was going to be quite feasible is when I was in London, I was turning down more shifts than I was getting because I was in London more frequently. And I think that was the time when I knew it was going to be like, right, this is actually a job. Have you ever, sort of, you are in the fashion industry, but you don't have a typical job per se. Yeah. Do you, have you ever had negative reaction? Ye originally, and it's... It, but the thing is, it's never been from people who are in the industry who have not got like formal training, but yeah. someone like yourself who works at GQ. We've always had respect from like publications and stuff like this. It's always just been the cool kids in the scene sometimes okay. who have always been a bit, not threatened, but it's like, I don't know. It's who are these new kids? Like, you ain't grown up here. And now it's like, yeah. mm, whatever. It's sometimes a bit like that, but. It was all, like, majority was all love. Like, the thing with PAQ is we always, we never realised this, and it was credit to the people behind the scenes. They made it very PG, and they made it very, um, like, positive. And don't get me wrong, it's not like we were begrudgingly overly nice. Like, we could still slate each other, but the overarching thing was positive. And even now, 
when you get people like stopping you on the street, it's always been a positive reaction. Mm. It's never been kind of um, like, I couldn't imagine ever being on like a soap opera and playing a villain where people who just take like Facebook news for gospel being like, fuck you, you like, you killed this character on thingy. Like, I couldn't ever imagine having like false hair. If you had to be in one, what would you be in? Corey? Corey? Emmerdale. No, I've never really watched them. Yeah, maybe Heartbeat. Okay. Because Gothland's gorgeous. <laughs> Love Gothland. So yeah, maybe Heartbeat. Do you feel like you are part of the fashion industry? Do you ever get days and you're like, what am I doing? Do you get imposter syndrome? Oh, massively. Yeah. And it was, because at the time we weren't too sure how it would be perceived because initially it was an entertainment show. Obviously it's fashion based, mm. but our target audience is everyone. Like, yeah. very cliche, but it was everyone. It wasn't like, yeah, we're going to do this so we're respected in fashion. We just wanted to be like a top gear where you could be into fashion and you'll enjoy it, or you could just not be into fashion at all mm. and enjoy it. So there was kind of times where I never realized, I think the thing that solidified it was Charles Jeffrey. We met him, it was a, a showroom. We went around and Charles Jeffrey was like, ah, oh, I know you boys, you're PAQ. Whenever I'm hungover, I always stick your show on. <laughs> and I think that was when we realized we got proper respect out of like the fashion industry where, because yeah. we were a bit unsure if it was just going to be like, uh, you've got a fashion show, but it's just another one yeah. kind of thing like that. But no, it got received really well and it felt, yeah, very bizarre. It was brilliant. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Making money. Oh, <laughs> man. Ch chatting shit. Not too bad, exactly. Um, do you, obviously you love fashion. Yeah. I hope so, because you've made, made money right. from it. But um, what, uh, what's your favourite brand? Fred Perry. It's always got to be. Okay. I'd say over actually it would be Fred. And I feel like I've got such deep roots from my early life, like my mum was a mod, my auntie and uncle are punks. So it'd be like Fred and Doc Martens are my two mm. staples. Like there's brands that I love and brands that I admire, but if I was to wear two brands for the rest of my life, it would have to be Docs and Fred. And I was thinking about it and it's because outside of fashion, don't get me wrong, I've got no musical talent in my body. I've got, not got like a musical burning body, but the, the roots of music in like Fred and Docs is what makes it so cool to me. Yeah, it's unrivaled by anyone else, really. Exactly, and like, Fred taking over the 100 Club, let's yeah. say, so like, they bought out like, I don't know the full story, I don't know if they bought the right uh, 100 Club or like the earn it, so they always do like the gigs and that. Yeah. They're always fantastic, and it's, yeah, it's the whole bridge of music and fashion and just pop culture has always been dead cool. And from the North as well, Fred Perry's like a staple. You'd If you're going on a night out, you'd always have either a Ralph Ren button down or a Fred Perry polo button mm -hmm. down or like, it was, there wasn't much of a fashion scene, so Fred was your kind of, not high end, but it was your branded gear. Yeah. Cool so too. it made a lot of sense like that, and obviously your celebrities getting it, and one of my favorite facts is, uh, I'm gonna say a favorite facts, very, uh, <laughs> <laughs> saying it with my chest, and I'm gonna get corrected straight away. Pretty sure no one has ever been paid to wear Fred Perry. They've never, obviously there'll be like money exchanged to do like campaigns Campaign, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's never been like full on ambassadors. So when you see people like Amy Winehouse, Frank Skinner, yeah, Pete Doherty's and that, mm. they were Fred for the love of Fred. Mm. And I think that's what made it a lot cooler and a lot like more appealing in a way where knowing that it's not just being like a brand's got a fuck ton of money, we're gonna throw it at someone who's gonna get a big reach and it's gonna pop off from there. Yeah. And I think that's how it stood the test of time where it's it's gone through so many like subcultures throughout the years and it's still so relevant today. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the, uh, I'm not sure of their name in America, the black polo with the yellow? Oh, the Proud Boys. That's it, Proud Boys. What are it's, your thoughts on that? It was weird because one of my first ones, I remember a photo that I had and I was so proud of it because I had the Doc Martens with the yellow laces and I paired mm. it with the Fred Perry polo Ooh. with the, the black polo. <laughs> Obviously, this is years ago I worked at Fred. And now, you know, you're just like, for fuck's sake, lads, you've, you could have had anything and you decided to do that. But I can't remember it was now, but Fred came out with something really well. Like, they, they worded it really well and it kind of shut them down. And now, obviously, Fred's still going there. Obviously, I think the yellow and black polo is still a bit touchy. You'd never mm. go back to it now. It's, there's no point. It's kind of, you're not going to bring it back. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the connotations now, it's too far gone. But, yeah, it's like they kind of got themselves out of that rut. And it's, yeah, I'm glad it kind of, people realise the stupidity of it before it Yeah, it was a... It could have been catastrophic for the brand, but yeah, it had enough staying power to yeah, and people exactly. like you, fans, <laughs> keep on. it alive. Exactly. Um, obviously, it's rooted in like subculture, and you mentioned your mum's a mod. Yes. And auntie's 
Anton called punks. punks. Yeah. Um, subculture these days is sort of being brought back, so by and large by TikTok. Are you on TikTok? So I have TikTok. Going to mention Dilligan. He's so I'm. I have TikTok, but I never go on it. And I think like I don't have an unhealthy relationship with Instagram, mm. but I find myself doom scrolling a lot. And when we were at Cairo, we got told TikTok's the next big thing. And you kind of, it's kind of like the metaverse now where you're kind of unsure because it hasn't happened yet at the time of this recording. But now TikTok is potentially the biggest platform now. But I never caught the train. I still feel like I'm past it. But every, what, I'd probably say every 45 minutes, I'll get a notification of Dill sending me a DM of some <laughs> TikTok <laughs> meme or something like that. So I've never been, I'll maybe check it once a week for about 10 minutes. But because I've seen, I feel like I'm already past it. Instagram's the one for me. Because I feel like Instagram's more of a a digital photo album. Yeah. So that's how I quite like using Insta. But with TikTok, I'm kind of like, I don't feel the need to make something to go viral. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's not my kind of thing. But you can't deny that the effect that TikTok has had is huge. Yeah, it's mad. It's, it's absolutely it's massive. It's sort of it, on viral. It's brought back, you know, Y2K fashion. <gasps> there are trends that are popping out of you know, 13-year-old girls and boys using it that yeah. we probably have forgotten about. We wouldn't want back. But yeah. is there anything that, obviously you don't use it that much, but if TikTok could bring one thing back, a trend or Ugh. subculture? I, I, don't, cause I, oh, I keep stuttering for this because I'm like, I don't know how to... I don't know what I'd like to see, really, because I think it's such a... I know it sounds very stereotypical. It's like such a, a type of kid where it must be such a thing at schools mm. and I feel like I don't know what kind of style would be cool because I don't want it to be it's just I guess it's me gatekeeping but this kind of thing where the Mike Skinner kind of era of Frederick is like the unbuttoned like things it's a bit scally but then you don't want it to be kind of ruined for the sake of it but I feel like that's what's kind of lacking now where it's there's not really any subcultures anymore it's just such a mismatch of fashion and style of yeah a bit of everything, but at the same time, that style is a style. Yeah. So you don't really quite know what is the next place to branch off to. So I don't quite know where it could go. Yeah. How about yourself? Obviously at GQ, do you ever get like, do you have to look at forecasting this kind of stuff? Sort of, yeah. I mean, we should really know what's going on. But I, <laughs> I, I, I'm not very good at TikTok. Um, but we mentioned earlier, Indie Sleaze. And yeah. that's coming back on the catwalk. And I think oh, yeah. that's a result of what's going on on TikTok and things like that. Yeah. Like back in the day when we, we were a similar age, yeah. um, we would have been looking at Tumblr. And yeah. I think that is now the new Tumblr. So I yeah. would have been looking at Tumblr and being like, oh, right, this is like skinny jeans, look, blah, 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 blah. this is what I want to be doing. And then I think, yeah. You know what? Even saying that, it's, it's a perfect way because I think Instagram is, obviously you can, as you all know, you can make a, a false reality, but not so much because it's still photo-based mm. and video-based. But the thing that Tumblr and TikTok kind of have in common is you can be a character. Yeah. You can be kind of anonymous and you can kind of do whatever you want to be perceived as. You can do that. Yeah. So I think that's why it kind of, it, it, it does have that dreamy mood board s kind of, I can reinvent myself online to be whatever. So I think, yeah, the styles, I, I feel like I, I don't know enough to comment on TikToks. I mean, it's mad because there's but, so, like we were talking um, with List about dark academia. And that is just, that. <laughs> exactly, but it's, it's kind of you, loafers, big fan, right. um, that kind of preppy style, but mixed with that gothic, that Like thing. androgynous. Who would, who would have thought that was going to become a trend? And that yeah. is going to come out now. Yeah, it's I like, guess so. This well, is even all... like loafers have blown up recently. Yeah. Like there's Throwing Fits, who worded it best, the Throwing Fits podcast, and they worded it best mm -hmm. in its post-sneaker world. Yeah. So it was, yeah, like, I don't know. I don't know how I started wearing loafers. But it always made me feel, not cool, but you always want to be, you never want to be underdressed. Like, I'd kick myself if I left the house to do something proper in, like, joggers and a t-shirt, and then I got asked to go for, like, dinner with the queen, let's yeah. say. Just theoretically, that kind of thing. Has that happened? I, not yet. I keep turning her down. I keep... But she keeps pestering me. <laughs> but it's that kind of thing where, if you're there in, like, suit trousers and loafers, you're kind of ready for anything, where it's... Yeah. You don't look like a pillow. You don't look like you're... Uh, uh, <laughs> half of these lads in here are going to read soon. You do look like you dress for school every day, but you don't look like a school kid and you don't look like you come from a job interview. 
But there's something cool about like, it's relaxed and it's, I'm dead comfy, don't get me wrong. Like these are some of my most comfiest trousers. These are like 30 quid Relco ones. It's my best kept secret. <laughs> so this kind of stuff where it's like stay press and that, you, you don't really have trousers that really bother you unless you're wearing like very fucking dry denim that itches. Mm. You don't need to be too comfortable. Like not have, you don't need to be proper dapper 24 seven, but I do like dressing smart because you do feel better about yourself. Yeah. And I feel like when you've got that, you're kind of like, yeah, you know what? And yeah, you just feel a bit better. Whereas if you're just lounging like sweatpants and three day old t-shirt, whatever, you don't really have the same confidence. And I think that's where the majority of the style comes from. Yeah, of course. Um, what is your process in the morning? Do you lay things out the night before or you just get up and go? <laughs> you know what? I've been toying with the idea recently again because it, if I had, I'm not going to lie, this podcast, like I've had not an outfit, but I, I do pack like, so I've been here three days, I only packed two trousers and this is one of them. So I was wearing the other ones. Mm. So I knew what I was wearing for this and it was a hell of a lot easier. And I've only got like a t-shirt, a jumper, a t-shirt, two jumpers, and two jackets. And even then I was like, why am I making such a fuss? This, like, in the morning I'd be like, oh, does that go better? I was like, I probably should have just planned it. it. Takes 15, like what, five, 10, 15 minutes the night before. And I feel like it does give you that head start. So yeah. I kind of might start laying it out again, like a school <laughs> kid, <laughs> like non, non uniform day. But other than that, no, I'm genuinely, I'm a bit, not lazy, but it depends what I'm doing, depends what's clean, and it depends what the weather's like. But I basically, when I'm at home in Drift and I'm not doing anything apart from playing PlayStation, I either live in Sporting Rich Joggers or got the new J.W. Anderson, Uniqlo, you know, the fluffy yeah. ones. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's like, what, the Polar Tech, Heat Tech, whatever. So I live in those just to go collect my Greggs in the morning. But if I'm <laughs> with, actually going to go... With a pair of loafers. Oh, I wish oh, have you tripped out? They don't actually suit them. I think ah. it's my sock choice. I live in Sambas. Okay, yeah. So Sambas are like my, my weapon of choice. But then, um, if I was going to go out and like do something, like, if I was going to go, say, like take a car journey or something, if I was going to go to like another town or whatever, mm. then it's always just the same. It's stay press, either loafers or sambas. And then, I think on the top, it's kind of a free-for-all. So, I can kind of, anything goes. It's, what, it's, what, it's all blacks so in kind of yeah. a free reign. I need to ask, how many pairs of loafers do you have? Oh, my God. I probably, no joke, have about 16. 14, 16 at least off the top of my head. Okay. How many trainers do you have? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is that more? Um, I know you like, hey, Dill, how, you know, me and Dill used to live together. How many did I probably have? What's that? Pairs of shoes, trainers, and whatever. I think it's maybe like 25 or something stupid like that. <laughs> maybe 25 or something stupid like that. Okay. Quote, quote. <laughs> um, obviously, you, you love fashion. Yes. Yeah. Um, how, what, what triggered it? What got you into it? I actually can't remember like the first trigger of fashion. I remember, this is kind of, um, God, I feel like I'm in therapy. It's, uh, <laughs> fashion therapy. <laughs> fashion therapy. Retail therapy. Yeah. Hooray. Oh, what a name. There we go. Um, write that down. Write that down, Matt. Retail therapy. Pod name. Um, so, uh, I remember going to, we used to call it the rec. It's the recreational ground, the cricket club. Mm -hmm. And there's a group of lads um, who were maybe four or five years older than us. And I don't know what I'd have been wearing at the time, but they would have been wearing like Top Man and River Island. Tell you what it would have been. They'd been wearing Top Man and River Island, and so would I. And then when they started wearing stuff like All Saints, Ooh. I was like, yeah, I was like, whoa, fucking hell, you must be made of money. They, I would have been like 12, they'd have been like 16, 16 to 18. And I just remember seeing that. 2008, 2009? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah 20, yeah, something like that, what? around then. And it was, I remember seeing them being like, that's cool. And I remember kind of, I want dressing to impress them, but it was that kind of thing where what you wore is still, let's be honest, it is. Yeah. It is judgeable by his cover. Like, don't get me wrong, obviously when you meet someone, but at first glance, you can kind of tell a lot by someone by their outfit. Yeah, of course. Especially yeah. obviously working in fashion, it's just like a subconscious kind of thing, isn't it? And um, so I guess that was like my first time of really thinking about what I wear. Because I think before that, it had probably been like some billabong uh, <laughs> surf shorts and like a Cabrini t-shirt from- In uh, Yorkshire? Oh, 100%. Just like when you're going out with your mates, just like kicking, mom, kicking a football around and that. Oh, yeah, it okay. was just like floral <laughs> swimming trunks, like the surf shorts and t-shirts. And when you see like Top Man and that, it's like plimsolls or toms with like joggers and the three button t-shirts and mm -hmm. was it two or three for a tenner? Yeah. Those yeah. kind of ones. And I think that was like your first kind of, I don't know, the first, realistic fashion. But I remember also, because um, I was chatting about this um, 
with my mate recently. Where I'm from, the closest place to go shopping is Hull, which is half an hour away. And even then, it was only Zara, Tottenham River Island, and your kind of usual high street. And I remember I've got a friend called Aaron Young, and me and him used to be really into like the, the New York influencer kids now. I don't know what you call them, but it was like Kerwin Frost, Lucas Abat, Ass Pizza, Mike the Ruler. Mm-hmm. It was like Virgil and that. And I remember we used to love those, and it was when Virgil was sticking stuff on the back of t shirts. It was printed on the back of Ralph Renz. And what they were wearing is really cool. And I remember me and Azza, we used to go to London just to go to stores so we could hold a pair of like Raph Simmons Oswegos in our hand. Because you you'd see them online, you'd see all these like cool people wearing them and like you'd see them on like rap videos and whatever. Massive diehard Travis Scott fan, love him. Always have been. Maybe not so much anymore. But, I was going to say, can we say that? Yeah, maybe not anymore. It was like Alf and Days for Rodeo. It was like, it was that kind of era of music was phenomenal. Mm. And the whole style and that around that era is just brilliant. And then, yeah, with the Oswegos and that, just going there and being like... Where did you, um, where would you go in London? It was probably like, like, Harrods was the one, I think, which is really rogue now, because after living in London, Harrods is so far away from everything. Everything. It's, like, so, like, it's not known for its trainers either. <laughs> no, isn't it? But even just like, so just, just like in Leeds, yeah. just any multi brand, whatever, if they stock luxury goods, we'd find these kind of stuff that you see rappers and that yeah. way, and you'd be like, holding a Gucci piece and being like, you hear it name dropping so many songs, it's like, this, like you're obviously holding it, this is me holding a t-shirt, <laughs> feeling the sleeves and that, being like, this is a Gucci t-shirt. Yeah. This is the same thing that he'll have on his back in like uh, a music video, before like all like archive stuff and that. Yeah. You see, oh, it's like, bloody hell, I think that was probably when I first realised that I loved fashion, where it's like, this is sick and I want to be, not only do I want to see that and be that sick, I want to be like, I want to wear this and be able to keep up to date and be like, yeah, <laughs> obviously, definitely didn't go down the Oswego kind of route, but <laughs> loafers, I guess, is the same. When did you, I mean, yeah, why, why didn't you go down that route? Why did you decide to go down loafers and for Perry rather than... Because I remember I got one pair, and they were called Raph Simmons Response Trail 2. Okay, yeah. And it was yeah. on Offspring, and they're about <laughs> 250 quid, and they were down to 120 quid, and I got them as a Christmas present. It was my main Christmas present one year. I remember buying them and I was wearing Dickie's work pants, but I'm obviously a very scrawny lad and baggy jeans were a thing at the time. I went from top man super spray on to Dickie's work pants, the slim straight. Mm-hmm. And then when I wore the Oswegos, it was like I had cinder blocks on my feet. I just don't have the body type for it. So I think then I knew that. How tall are you? I'm 6'2. Okay. But I'm 65 kilograms. Yeah. I blow away in a strong gust of wind. So I guess he held me down. But it was that kind of thing where I just knew it didn't suit me. And it's one of those where I'll always appreciate from afar. Like, I'm a massive sneakerhead, but it just doesn't suit me. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm always like, yeah, I feel like the mod kind of style, it's got roots in it, it suits me, and it's fascinating history. So, yeah. Well, um, is there anyone in your life now that inspires you? Sort of what you wear or? I, I genuinely don't think there is, but only because I haven't You probably really... just pissed off a lot of people. Probably, yeah. <laughs> now, I, haven't, I haven't bought clothes for so long that now I'm kind of like... Gifted. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but, um, I didn't... Um, I, I just kind of choose my outfits and that now because... Well, not choose, but I don't really go out and look at... Yeah. I don't really look at what's around anymore. I just kind of... I know what I like. I haven't... I haven't really shopped for anything that I've wanted for years. If there's anything that I see in person that I come across and I like it, I'm quite impulsive in that way. But other than that, I haven't really bought many things. It's just more like finding ways to reuse stuff with other stuff. And it's when you've got obviously decent basics, such as like the black trousers, yeah. you can kind of pull in anything. So I've probably got jumpers, like plain jumpers that'll work with some wild trousers if I see them, whatever. So it's that kind of thing where I've always got other things that can go there. So if a piece will fit into my wardrobe. Yeah. So that's why I'm never really like, oh, I'm off to this, I need a full fit. I'm very much just kind of like, ah, oh, that'll work for that. And I quite surprise myself if I haven't worn anything for years. And it's like, oh, where's that, works, that been yeah. this whole time? At what point did you or did people around you realise they should stop buying you clothes? Because my mum used to buy me clothes when I was like 15. I'd be like, no, this needs to stop. <laughs> <laughs> when was yeah. yours? Because I remember going to Designer Outlet and it was... <laughs> I remember going to Designer Outlet and... With like, it kind of relates back to Fred Perry again. If we were in the Fred Perry store, mum would mm-hmm. be like, this jumper is 20 quid, do you want it? And I'd see it, I'd be like, oh, I don't know, like I don't think I'd wear it. 
and then we go into like the Nike store and I'd be like, oh, this crew next 20 quid. She'd be like, well, you've got your own money. <laughs> and I think that was the kind of thing where it got to the point where if I had my own recommendations, it got more and more like that where mum just slowly stopped fizzing yeah. out, like buying me kind of stuff. Like it was cute. It was very wholesome. Don't get me wrong, but it got quite questionable where it's like, that might have been cool when you were growing up, but it hasn't come back around again yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, I need to ask your mum, what kind of stuff does she wear? Is she still a mod? Um, <laughs> why did that get such a reaction? <laughs> um, tell you what, my mum dresses, I hope she don't mind me saying this, she just dresses like a stereotypical mum. What about it? Was, exactly. You want to stop bloody drinking. Um, he says. Yeah, um, no, mum doesn't dress like, she still has like a cropped haircut, I guess. But I tell you what, now that I think about it, now that I think about it, mum's like, mum's obviously a middle-aged woman. I can't tell if it's like a cropped mod cut or if it's just a Karen cut. Uh. But, um, she, uh, she still likes like a paisley. <laughs> Sorry, mum. Um, she still wears like paisley frocks and that, and she still has like mod things, but mainly with mum, it's the music. So she's always loved like Paul Weller, like the Style Council. Yeah. It's like Jam Style Council and... Uh, just like other, just maybe, maybe like soul and that. So it's not so much dressing like a mod, but I remember times when I've never known mum as a mod in that way, like dressing, just being from the music. And then when I got a bit older, she showed me photos like her and one of the first boyfriends where he had like a scooter with like all the mirrors on it and she was on the back of it, both in Parker's. There's another photo of her in a park on Christmas holding up sound effects by the jam on vinyl. Mm. And she was like, I was buzzing to get this and all this kind of stuff. So it's more just kind of like the music side of that and little kind of prompts where when I was getting into it a little bit, she'd be saying, oh, like you'll, have, like, you'll have to get some desert boots. So I remember walking down Oxford Street to get some proper Clark's desert boots because I think I'd had some top man ones in the past. She's like, now that your feet have stopped growing a bit, we'll get you some proper like desert yeah. boots. Same with Dr. Martens as well. And funny enough, the first pair of Dr. Martens she bought me are the same ones that I wear now. I've had them for 10 years at least. Wow. And, uh, and they're still going strong because I polish them up and whatever and they still come up great. But um, Do they take you ages to break in? Because they are fucking no, hard. Do they not? Technique. No, so what it is is, because they're just like all leather and there's not like much off feet or something. No, not <laughs> even. You just fucking, um, what you do is you blast them with a hairdryer. Yeah, low, cool. yeah. Like high heat, low power, blast them on the inside and outside, thick socks. God, I'm gonna have to stand up for this. <laughs> and you know when you like get your creases, I don't know what you'd call it, but yeah, you stand up and you get your creases in them, take them off, blast them again, and wear them on a night out. And I promise you, you won't have shit from them. I broke in a pair of the churches, which is the monkey boot style, broke them in on the same night. Is and they were the ones that are notoriously Blind like, drunk though, on a night out, or? It does help, because you kind of, <laughs> I know it sounds off, but it's because you you don't really feel it as much, but you're also away from home, so you can't just be like, oh, I'm just going to nip home and get change my shoes. Yeah. But it's one of those where once you've done that first like first hurdle, as soon as you've tried them on the second time, you're like, oh, these are actually not too bad. Yeah. And then they're broken in from there. It's fun hmm. fact, top tip. Um, what is the first item you've ever truly, truly loved that you've owned? So the first thing that I properly... <laughs> Bought, that was like my first kind of high-end purchase was a Givenchy 17 watch. And it was coming up to like my 18th birthday. I think it was like four or five months away. Now I was in Liberty and it was a watch that I've always loved because a lad that I had followed on Instagram had the same one in a different color. And it was like maybe 750 quid down to 500. So mum and dad said, right, we'll transfer you the money and it's going, that'll be your 18th birthday present. And yeah, I think that would be my first proper like real purchase, I guess. Like my okay. first... Yeah. God, but there must be something before then, but that was like first top of my head. It's 18, so before that, everything else was crap. Pretty much, <laughs> top, yeah. Top man. 100%, yeah, because I started peaking when I was 19. So other than that, I've just always lived in Driftfield where it's not live within your means, but it's that kind of thing where it's like, why am I spending? It's that whole thing where it's like, what's that thing? It's like, lads will spend 400 quid in a pair of trainers to impress a lass in a five quid boohoo dress. <laughs> and it's, it's that in drippy older. It's like, why am I going out and spend all this designer gear when yeah. everyone else is just wearing this kind of shit? It's like, 
if you told someone I'm wearing a 500 quid top, they'd swill you. <laughs> so there's no point in buying this kind of stuff until it's appreciated. Yeah. So I think the watch was like the best step into that luxury fashion item. I'll tell you what it might be as well. It would have been, we had an episode of PAQ where I pulled a pair of Gucci loafers, or I think we'd bought them, but had to return them. So we'd already like, they were technically ours like in our possession. Um, and I said to the producers, can I buy them off you? Oh, I can't remember if I bought them off them or they're a bit too small, but I remember thinking, no, they're a bit too small. I remember thinking, I really want these. So I went to Liberty on the night and I bought a pair of Gucci loafers for 500, 535, I think it was. And I remember thinking, fucking hell, I've just spent half a grand on a pair of loafers. And I was thinking, Jesus. Are these Christ. the same loafers that you told me earlier have gone mouldy? No, no, okay. different ones. <laughs> but. <laughs> but <laughs> 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 but yes, yeah, so I think that was like my first proper purchase of like high end luxury, like high end clothing. And I kind of, you, you do get a taste for it, don't you? Yeah. Once you've spent it once, you never think, right, I'm banging with this. It's like, oh, now that I've done that, I wake up, I still feel exactly the same. So I'm like, do you do um, still have that watch? I do. Do you wear it? I don't. It no. needs another battery. Uh huh. But I, I like, I left it. In a hold all when I moved house one time, I just packed it into a hold all because I had another watch and it's still in the same hold all. So I know exactly where it is and I bring it out a few times and be like, ah, oh, fucking hell, I remember this. Like, it was so sick. I need to get it fixed at some point. But recently I was looking at it being like, this is feasible to wear again. It's still like really cool and that. Because I only wear like what I've got on now and then a Garmin, like, like a Fitbit equivalent yeah, kind yeah. of thing, like a, like a running watch. So you know what? Why not? Like, I might just get it sorted Get it back now. out. Yeah, yeah, why not? Um, is there anything that you... Obviously, there are so many collaborations, so many drops. Is there anything that you had your eye on, didn't get, and you really, really wished you had? Not so much like in a sellout way, but again, it's another PAQ one where... I remember the loafers, but I can't remember the backstory to how they were. And I'm, I, I want to say it's when we did an episode where we dressed like each other. And Elias dressed like me, and he had these red and black Burberry loafers, mm. and they were gorgeous. It was like a tassel loaf, but it was like a, like a like a cricket ball red kind of thing. It was a really strong pinky. I don't know what the color was called, and they were like quite. Uh, they were not like too wild, but they were still quite eccentric. And they'd been like another four, five hundred quid. And I remember thinking like, oh, I really like them, and I might just do the same thing as what I did with the Gucci. So I was like. Can I give you a lot of the money and then I keep them? I didn't do it. And I didn't think much of it. And the longer it's gone, it's more like, I kind of kick myself trying mm. to find something similar and I can't find anything like that where all my loafers, to me, they're very different. But if you looked at it, would be like, why have you got 15 pairs of the same fucking shoe? <laughs> but these are one of those shoes where it's like, they were quite a statement piece. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. sometimes if you got something like a bit fancy, like either a red carpet or like a dinner, I'd be like, I wish I had something like that that I would just have had to bring out once every blue moon. Yeah. So yeah, I think that would have been it. You've um, you've spoken a lot about British. What about yourself, though? What about me? Yeah. What does that? I don't know. Have you got anything like that? What that I really wanted? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, there must, <laughs> I I don't don't there must be something. <laughs> I mean, right now I'd love the uh, Loewe Spirited Away collection, but Ooh. that's yeah, a bit out of my reach. Mm. Um, no, I don't know. Yeah, not as easy this side of the no, seat, is it? it's not. <laughs> um, I really liked Christopher Bailey's last um, Burberry collection, mm. which was very big on Czech. When would that have been? That would have been... 2017? 2018? Early 2018? They might have been Christopher Bailey loafers then. I think they were, yeah. I'm better off to the same thing, aren't yeah. I? <laughs> I've noticed you've mentioned a lot of uh, British brands as opposed to international. Do you have a bit of an allegiance to shopping British? No, I don't. I've always loved British subcultures, and I think a lot of them as well mm. is... I get a lot of my style inspiration from like the 80s casuals. Yeah. The thing about them was they used to go around like... Like, international travel obviously was existed, but it wasn't too, like, common. So if your football team made it into, like, Europa League or whatever, and you are playing away... Excuse me. Anyway. <laughs> um, that's, how, that's how I feel when you talk about football, too. <laughs> 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 they'd go around and they'd go to like sports stores and they'd pick up stuff that you couldn't get back here so it was a lot of like your Lecoq's body like your LS Ticcini's and stuff like that mm -hmm. so I think that all comes under it where it's 
I love British subcultures, but it's not necessarily British brands because I think just like everything British, it's not usually ours. Oh yeah. So, course, yeah. <laughs> so I think yeah, a lot of like that kind of style is it's an umbrella of like British style. Yeah. But at the same time, like the original mods base their looks on like Italian modernism. It was mm -hmm. it was like the Riviera and it was wanting to dress cool and it was seeing like all these like in like continental films and that. So it would be like your button downs, your chinos, and your loafers, rather than looking like you're being thrown through. This is England mm. kind of thing. <laughs> so it was, yeah. I guess it is kind of like the Italian style. Obviously, was like button down, lo uh, button down chinos and loafers, but that's such a British style as well. Yeah. So I guess yeah, it's, it's, it's not strictly British, but I guess everything that I do is subconsciously quite British inspired. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I'd say it is. Yeah. Yeah. I guess Somehow, so. in a yeah. sense. Um, I was going to say, is there anything, and this is where you can, you know, maybe go free being someone might send you it. Is there anything you want right now that's out there? Oh. Oh, God, that's put me under pressure. I don't know. So there was some uh, red and black Burberry loafers. <laughs> no, um, I don't know, actually. There's not really... Like I said, I don't really look for stuff to shop at. Like, it's... Again, gifted. <laughs> yeah, but there was one where I remember seeing... Um, there was like this this jacket and it was um it's like a Japanese it's quite like thin, like rip stoppy looking thing and it's um it's like a hooded one with like side fastenings where you tie it up. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing it on Instagram and being like, This is pretty sick, like and I saved it to my Instagram. But I wasn't gonna like go online, open up a tab and find it and buy it. Just kinda thought about it, I was like, that's really fucking cool, but I never did anything about it. Fast forward, I was actually meeting Dill at the pub. And then I was getting my hair cut and I was like running really late. So, but Dill ended up chatting to this lad called Dan, who we'd met like a few days before. And Dan was running a pop-up store next door to the pub. Uh, anyway, I turn up, start chatting, whatever. And then Dan says, yeah, I've got a pop-up store next door, whatever. This is my Instagram. Look on the Instagram. One of the first photos is that jacket. I was oh. like, no fucking way. So I end up going next day and end up buying it. And it's like, so that's the kind of thing where... Good marketing. Yeah. They've got you. They've been tapping but into. Do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't have really bought it online, but because it's like not because it's got a story behind it. Yeah. But it's one of those. It's like fuck it. I've got to get it now. Yeah. Rather than being like, if I was gonna get it online, I'd have kicked myself straight away, being like, it's however much I could have spent this on whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm still. I'm a Yorkshire man, so it's I'm <laughs> tight as fuck. So I think that's where most of it comes from. Is there anything that you have that you've sort of grown out of, but you would never sell? Oh yeah, I'm a very sentimental person. So I've got I've got so many wardrobes. I've got like it got to the point where I have to have like clothes rails in my room just from hoarding shit. Um, but at my parents' house, I've got like a sentimental wardrobe, and it's a lot of stuff where it's all like PAQ kind of related stuff. Like when we did like pop-up stores and design T-shirts to when I played baseball with the London Mets and they gave me a t-shirt. No. <laughs> so that, like, I went to like the gig, it was the Prodigy's gig, the Days My Enemy tour in like 2015, so I've got that. So all like sentimental stuff, and I think that would be one of those, I just have to grab them all and like yeah. save them all. How do you think your friends would describe your style? <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> What was that, Magnus Ronning? Submissive and breedable. Submissive and breedable? <laughs> um, I don't know, how to describe it? They'd probably say, I'd probably say schoolboy. Okay. It probably is that kind of thing where I dress like I'm off to church or something like that, where it's, yeah, yeah I'm not too adventurous, I guess, okay. but I also, I love wearing Larry shit. Like, I'm very, not in like a confident way, but like, I don't mind playing like a class clown. So you could dress me up in anything and I wouldn't really care. Mm. Um, but for my own style, yeah, I, I, um, I think the one that I get the most is schoolboy kind of thing. I was just taking the piss, but... Do you think yeah. your style will change as you get older? Because obviously feel, it has over the past 10 years, but do you think yeah, there'll be a shift? I feel like it like, I can't imagine it fully shifting, but I can imagine it maturing. Okay. So it just so no depends. more Larry Amelie on door <laughs> jumpers. We'll see. Maybe it's going to go even Larry Amelie on door jumpers. Maybe it goes 4D with like a little sheep on it or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. It's We'll cross that bridge when we come to it kind of thing. Because yeah. I got, when I first started getting into it, the more I looked forward, the more I realised I was looking backwards for inspiration. 
but there's only so far you can go before you're dressed in chainmail. So I kind of need to look forward again now. So. Balenciaga. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. Balenciaga putting it out. Very so. true. Yeah, so. Um, and then, so finally, we obviously spoke about where you came from, but where are you going? What's, what, what are your plans? For like this year, I guess. So like in general, like... This year, and then where do you see, you know, where do you see your career going? <laughs> 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 um, so I've, I'm ready to move back to London so now I'm at the point now where it's uh, if, if there's a, a house that comes up I'm ready to kind of pull the trigger mm-hmm. um, job wise I obviously I do a lot of brand deals and the ones I look forward to most are the ones that are quite um, what do you call it? Like documentary kind of based, like going out and making videos about like passion projects kind of stuff. Like we did uh, one about, there's a menswear store called The Priory, yeah. which is like very near and dear to a few of our lads' hearts in uh, up north. It's like a multi-brand retailer and it became like a hub where it had uh, a barber's, a, so it's like a start off with a streetwear shop. Then they did like a premium store downstairs. And in that premium store, it had a barber's and a coffee shop. So you see like branded parties and stuff like that. And it was, it was brilliant. And that shut down. So with Clark's Originals, we did like a a 15 minute video about the Priory Boy style and like going around and like interviewing some of our lads who remember it and all this kind of stuff. Stuff like that was brilliant and it's so rewarding. So I'm looking forward to doing more stuff like that where it's hands on deck going out to places. Mm -hmm. I want to travel more because I'm a notorious bastard to travel with as my managers will say. (laughs) Because I'm too anxious with traveling. So I'm always like, I enjoy it when I'm there, but I'll huff and puff until I get there. Okay, right. So, but now I feel like I'm old enough. Where's the furthest you've been? LA, I guess. What was that? That's what, 12 hours? Yeah. I'd love to go to Asia now though and that, but it's, um, I want to broaden my horizons. But (laughs) when it was for work, I was never really too bothered. Like I'd never go on holiday for fun. But now I'm at the point now where it's, yeah, fuck it. I want to go back to Italy for sure because I miss it. Paris, it's quicker from London to get to Paris than it is for me to get home to Yorkshire. No. To get to Gardenord, it's what, two and a half hours? Yeah. To get there, it's one hour, 50 and 40 minutes drive or 50 minutes drive. So it's 10 minutes either side. But yeah, you could be in Gardenord, centre of Paris, before you get to my house in Drift. So Paris is dead easy. I wouldn't even count that. But then, yeah, I want to kind of do New York again. And maybe Asia or, for me, very rogue. I want to go to Jamaica. I've got... I've got <laughs> I've got, I do. I like, always fucking have done, you bastard. I've got such a love for, like, the kind of soul music and, like, the whole, like, the whole reggae rock steady and that. I've always been tempted. And now with, like, we've got no ties to, like, PAQ and this kind of stuff, I'd love to kind of just do it, just like a really radgy brand deal to just go somewhere, like... Fuck it, we're gonna throw you in. You've got this person, this person, this person to meet. <laughs> I'd find it. I've always wanted to go. I've got such a bad thing. It's like, I've always wanted to go, but I never want to go. I'd like to have done things, yeah, yeah. but I don't want to do things. But Jamaica's always been one of those where I'm like, I've always just really wanted to go there, but I'd never just sit down and be like, flights to Jamaica. So if there's any brand deals that want to hit me up. <laughs> um, obviously, you people like the way you dress. Would you throw yourself into your own brand, own label? <laughs> yes, I would love to, but after Mike Key over there, who knows exactly how to do it, and you know what the ins and outs are, it sounds like a lot of fucking hassle. <laughs> it's like, I'd really love to do it, and at some point when I'm ready to settle down and put my everything into it, I don't want to go half assed because it'd have to be cut and sew. I wouldn't just want to do like a printed t-shirt brand, mm. but I would absolutely love to release my own brand. What would it be? What would, you, what would you sell? Loafers, obviously. I'd love to do loafers. I've always wanted to do a loafer collaboration. Um, mm. But ideally, jackets. Okay. I, I think jackets would be fantastic. But yeah, mainly outerwear. Outerwear and then loafers. So yeah, that would be my kind of thing. Well, this is your year. There we go. Cool. Okay. Happy days. Right, let's wrap it up. You've done enough talking. Yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> Please tell me we're rolling. <laughs> <laughs>